Hey, you guys. So, if you guys are new, welcome to the channel. My name is Shamira, aka Mimi. If you guys are returning, welcome back. Um, if you guys already saw the other uh, video, the earlier video uh, previously, um, just me updating you guys on the energy, okay, the vibrations I was on. These cards at the end of the video, they all fell out. Okay, I definitely want to get into them. I want to do a dream interpretation because you guys, I had a really dark, dark dream. Okay, and I'm going to tell you guys this because like I said in the previous video, sometimes the people around me, the people I'm connected to could be going through things. And whenever they go through things, I kind of understand they're looking for solutions when they come to me and they tell me certain things. Okay, I might not be able to give them that solution uh, <clears throat> right off the bat. Okay, like directly, but sometimes I feel like. Being connected to those people, I take on their burdens, I take on their troubles, and I also are able to tap into their higher self. My higher self is able to tap into their higher self. And when I'm open enough, and when I'm calm enough, when I'm connected enough, okay, when I'm re-energized and revitalized, and I'm open to those energies, I'm on the uh, energetic frequency of those people's higher self, I definitely will take on their solutions, okay? So their solutions sometimes come to me in dreams. And maybe you guys are going through an issue right now. You guys are going through something that is uh, driving you crazy, has something to do with uh, parenting. Whether you guys are parents or you guys are having issues with you guys as parents, okay? Mother and father healing, okay? It definitely has something to do with a lesson behind a family, okay? Oh my goodness, I, I feel like I don't want to truly tell you guys this dream because I'm telling you, dream time. I've been having a lot of dreams lately uh, for the past week. The past week is that time when I took to myself. Uh, I got myself, uh, I would say, reconnected to my spiritual realm, to my spiritual self, to the inner me. I definitely feel a shift. I feel a change. I feel more calm. I feel more relax revitalize i feel more open okay so i received a dream a few days ago and when i first had that dream it woke me out of my sleep uh five o'clock almost i think it was almost six o'clock in the morning okay but it was really early in the morning and it made me kind of sad okay and i know i had that dream for a reason so i'm gonna tell you guys the dream let me get straight into it the dream started off with uh, me, okay? It was me and my sister, okay? <laughs> me and my sister. Of course, it was me. It was my soul, but the body. I saw myself through a mirror. It wasn't me, okay? It wasn't my face, the face that I'm currently wearing now. But I can tell that it was me, so I was kind of living through another person, okay? Almost like I jumped through to another body or another realm or something like that, but... Um, it was my sister. The person was my sister, okay? And my sister had two children, a two-year-old and a five-year-old, okay? And I had another sister. So it was three of us, three sisters and two children, okay? They belonged to one. She was really, really tired. She was exhausted. And she looked at me. And she asked me, can you please take my babies to daycare? Because I'm really tired right now. I want to go to daycare. Other one goes to uh, kindergarten, Okay. So, like I said, one is two and one is five. And I'm like, you know what? If you're tired, you're uh, kind of exhausted. I'm, that's what I'm here for, okay? So, I took the two babies by their hands. And for some reason, I'm looking at their faces. Their faces were blurred. It was no outline of their eyes. and no, I couldn't really see those children. But it was two little girls and they were so small. Um, and it was like we were talking telepathically. Uh, me and my sister, okay? We weren't really talking and speaking out of our mouths, okay? So she dropped them off um, in my hands and I walked to the school and I actually didn't want to walk by myself. But um, as I'm walking, I stop and I look to the car and I see my sister after she dropped off the children to my care. She had this argument on the phone, okay? And I heard uh, her boyfriend and for some, it sounds crazy, you guys, okay? Her boyfriend or her children's father was uh, Chris Brown. Okay, just hear me out. Okay, Chris Brown. It was a it was a singer. It was some sort of. Okay, I don't know why I heard Chris Brown. Okay, maybe his name was Chris Brown, but it really wasn't him though. But <clears throat> this sister, she was connected with a artist. She was connected with someone who 
was famous, who was well known, okay, who had power, have, who had influence, okay, but he was really uh, abusive in some way. He was verbally abusive and he would threaten her, okay. So, and I got this pain in my stomach, okay, as I'm holding the children's hand and they're like, the children are like used to it because I guess they're used to hearing the parents, okay, fuss and argue, mother and father hailing. Um, some of you guys could have memories, okay, you could have a sibling of your mother and your father constantly arguing. Some of you guys may have had, and it's 12, 12, 1 o'clock, you guys, okay, you guys could have been in a a situation where you were always left in the care of a, whether it had been a aunt or uncle, and I'm even hearing grandparent, okay? You definitely were left in the care of probably even a nanny or a family friend. You were always left in the care of someone else, not your father and your mother, because you guys always had, uh, you always uh, witnessed your parents, okay, arguing and fussing, okay? So you guys could be going through a situation like that, um, not really seeing a healthy environment, not really seeing or being raised in a healthy home where it was compromised. It was always arguing, fussing, challenges, okay? It's five challenges and, and uh, a lot of conflict, okay? Uh, amongst your, your family, where you guys learn to maybe go within, okay? And stay quiet, stay meek. It's something about you guys uh, staying to yourself to uh, keep the peace and not really... Uh, say things, okay, say what you're really feeling, say what you really are experiencing because you guys were kind of afraid of your mother and father, afraid of your parents and how it might affect them. Some of you guys could have thought for a long time that your parents, if they did split, they had a, uh, they had a divorce. You guys could have felt like it was your fault. If you guys weren't born, your parents wouldn't be upset. I'm seeing two siblings, okay? Whether it have been two sisters, two brothers, or a brother and a sister, I'm definitely seeing that, uh, you guys, in some way, it affected both of you guys in a different way, okay? And it may have affected you guys into this into this person who always took on the family drama, always took the brunt of your family's uh, issues, okay? Maybe always have been that scapegoat, that person who was abused or told. Um, you always was that person who, like I said, wanted to be the peacekeeper, or didn't want to rock the boat. So you guys were always people pleasing. Okay. Giving your family, giving your mother, giving your father what they wanted because you guys just wanted to ease your parents' pain. So you guys were in some way, the parents and your mother and father, the parents, they were the children. So you always had to take on their burden or had to put your wants and your needs to the side to please them and to make them happy. You guys in some way grew up to believe that. You weren't worthy to be given to, okay? You guys were always that person to give, 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 to soothe, okay? Something about soothing, soothing your parents, soothing other people around you, soothing uh, your family. And you guys aren't really soothing yourself or you guys will never get your your needs and your wants soothed. You never will get your your troubles, the things that were brewing and you were never able to get it soothed in return. Um, and I did do that video earlier about reciprocity. People wanted me to do dreams interpretation for free, even though I do not mind doing that sometimes. Um, if a person cannot afford my prices, it is, it's not about me charging people and stuff like that, but it's understanding my worth and what I'm willing to give, the energy, the time, the effort I put into it. So really dig deep down to find you guys, find this, uh, help you guys find a solution to your issues and why you guys are having this recurrent dream or problems. It does take time and also it does take energy and I do expect to get given back to in return. I can't just give, give, give. And some of you guys may feel a little uncomfortable with giving. Okay, and not giving but receiving or you guys may have issues with uh, asking people to give back to you. Uh, I was expecting people to uh, give you that reciprocity. You may feel icky or you guys may have been taught by parents that you guys want your needs and to be given back to is selfish. And then that's not the that's not the that's not the truth. OK, so going back to that dream. I went into the school. I took the two year old to. Uh, to the office because I didn't know where the two-year-old belonged because I wasn't familiar with that school. I didn't know what their daycare was in that school. It was a daycare in the school and also the rest of the grades. But I dropped the five-year-old off to the class, but they didn't want to leave their, their sibling, okay? So the one-year-old, the um, two-year-old and the five-year-old were holding each other's hand really, really tight. And I also asked one of my other sisters to join us. I just didn't want to be by myself, okay? It was something about not being by myself. 
So the five-year-old didn't want to go to her class because she didn't want to leave the two-year-old by herself because they had just witnessed the mother and father have uh, an argument, okay? So it was basically the five-year-old thought that it was their duty to take care of the two-year-old. So it's like they wanted to miss class to stay with their two-year-old sister or sibling to make sure they were okay. Almost like a soothing technique, technique or something like that. And I also asked after seeing that, it kind of triggered me, okay? So I kind of, in some way, seeing my sister argue with her children's father, okay? A boyfriend, whatever he was to her, made me not want to be alone. Made me not want to take on the care of two other little children by myself. And it felt I felt the need to call my sister. So I called another sister. So it was like, I was trying to, you know, in some way, use my sister, okay? She was older than me to, um, <clears throat> in some way, soothe me. Why I help soothe these little girls and little girls soothe each other. You understand what I'm saying? So it was a cycle of soothing. Okay. So a lot of symbolism in that dream. Okay. Let's fast forward. Um, I was told by the people in the office to wait because, and they, they were really busy. It was a lot of things going on at once. So I was told to wait in the room. And for some reason, you guys, when I went in this room with the two, with the two children, a two-year-old and a five-year-old and my sister, we were in there waiting quietly, looking around the room. You see like little, it was uh, pictures of little butterflies and drawings and different children from different grades, uh, pictures, their pictures of their art hanging up on the wall. There's something about a lot of art and creativity in that dream too. A lot of symbolism, like I said, of soothing and stuff like that. So some of you guys, if you did have issues with your family, having a dysfunctional family and mother and father always fighting and arguing, you guys could have soothed yourself, your, your siblings. You guys could have uh, found some sort of artistic pursuit to put your energy to into to soothe yourself, whether it be drawing. Okay, maybe a lot of drawing to express how you guys were feeling. But I saw a lot of butterflies and the butterflies do symbolize uh, transformation. Okay, metamorphosis. You guys went through a lot of different changes within yourself um, because of this conflict with your family. Okay, so you guys could be in need of healing that okay you guys may be having certain dreams because you guys need to heal that mother and father wound um that you guys have and i'm also seeing that that sibling that sibling okay could be uh that that hero okay that mentor that that hire you the higher you that your inner child needs okay to soothe themselves okay so the five-year-old is like the higher self okay the older the more evolved one they felt the need to take on the parental role to soothe the two-year-old the two-year-old is that scared little inner child within so you guys could have definitely uh looked towards yourself okay to soothe yourself um you guys may have to parent yourself also, okay, because you guys really didn't have parents who were, uh, I would say, uh, emotionally attentive to you and your needs and your wants. So you guys, like I said, not only soothe your siblings, soothe your family, soothe your parents, but you guys also had to learn to soothe yourself because you guys found out or you realized in an early age that you couldn't really depend on anyone else to come rescue you. So you had to be that person for yourself. So um, like I said, once again, it's a lot of symbolism, you guys, in this dream. Um, I'm looking at the different butterflies and stuff like that. You guys have been through a lot of situations by yourself where you guys were forced, okay, to soothe yourself, to tend to yourself, to care for yourself, to protect yourself. And some of you guys could have done this by drawing, okay? Um, and because of that, you guys are really emotionally intelligent, emotionally mature, wise, a lot of wisdom, okay, and a lot of strength within you guys. So, um, and because of also that, you guys feel like you're strong, you're invincible, but that's not it. A lot of you guys are putting on that show because you guys are needing to, or you guys feel that need to protect that inner child, okay, because you guys are still working through that mother and father healing, okay? You guys are still in some way, um, feeling the need to push people away, okay? Like I said, it's something about feeling weird when people give to you. Uh, feeling like uh, you're not deserving or you're not worthy to be reciprocated to. Or it may mean you guys are weak or you guys aren't protecting that younger child if you feel the need to get help from someone else or get help from outside sources because you guys have been doing it for so long. You guys have been taught to do it for so long, okay? So some of you guys could be having certain dreams because you guys, like I said, are still working through um, healing those mother wounds, okay? It's something about protection, soothing, uh, changing the way you guys soothe yourself, okay? 
instead of going within all the time and isolating some of you guys may be called to maybe share your 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 uh issues okay share your problems and what you guys are going through with other people around you so they can help soothe you so they can finally satiate that need of soothing okay self-soothing you guys have a really really deep need to be loved to be soothed okay but when you guys are given the opportunity or chance to get it you guys are rejected or neglected okay um yeah i definitely had to say that so if you guys find yourself maybe pushing friends away when you're going through a hard time, stop doing that, okay? If you guys are going through a hard time and one of your siblings wants you guys to open up to them, spend time with them, ask you questions, don't be afraid to tell them, okay? Um, you guys are not in survival mode anymore. You guys are not a little child anymore. It's safe for you guys to tell other people because there are other people around you guys in your vicinity who is willing to soothe you and to comfort you and to give you exactly what the inner child is looking for, what the inner child needs so that adult you can finally take a rest and take a break and not feel the, the, the need or not feel the responsibility to soothe that inner child, okay? Give your inner child exactly what it needs. Allow people to be there for you. Okay, to really truly be there for you because you guys have been there for you yourself enough. You guys have been through so many different changes and metamorphosis, death and rebirths and transformations on your own difficult times where you guys do something about the 1616 16 months again. Um, you guys owe it to yourself, okay, to finally, like I said, satiate that need to be soothed by another person, um, by external forces, okay. I know some people are like, no, no, don't look, don't look outside of yourself, look within. But I feel like you guys have been doing that so long. You don't, it's time for you guys to heal that part of yourself. You guys don't know how to receive because you guys don't know how to turn to other things and other people. Um, we don't have all the answers in life. We don't have all of the, all of the solutions. Sometimes those solutions um, are not going to come from us. It definitely may come from another person. So if you guys are having different issues or different, uh, are looking for ways to uh, gain, okay, get that key to unlock your solution to your issues. Instead of always looking to yourself, maybe look outside of yourself, turn to a good friend, turn to a mentor in some way, okay? Or as some of you guys, this message may definitely be uh, that solution you guys have been searching for, you guys have been dreaming about. Okay, it's something about me having this dream. This dream had nothing to do with me. Okay, because this is not what's going on in my own life, my own personal life. So I know this for sure it has something to do with someone around me or in my community right now. Whoever I'm talking to right now, you guys will get whatever information, whatever uh, solution to your problems you guys have been looking for. Okay, you will get it from this video. And if not, it could be um, you guys could be getting this information. You could have ran across my information because it's meant to help not yourself, but someone else in your life. Okay. Maybe a sibling. Okay. Maybe a neighbor. Maybe someone who you know is going through this. Okay. So fast forward. Like I said, I'm waiting in this room and I look to the side. I hear humming. Okay. And I see my grandmother. My grandmother passed away. She passed away seven years ago, okay, when my son was born, five days after my son was born. That's when she passed away, okay? And I do believe it's true when one person comes into this life, okay, the portals, um, another person leaves, okay? It's an energy exchange, okay? Reciprocity to the world, okay, to Mother Nature. Um, oh, my gosh. When one guardian leaves, another one is born, okay? And... Uh, it's a lot of, like I said, it's a lot of similar, I, I keep saying to you guys, I have to keep saying it's a lot of similar in this dream because um, some of the dream, I, I can some way see how it ties into my own life, but um, I've worked through those issues. I've worked through those problems and stuff that I was going through, but um, I kind of saw a lot of different people in my dream and um, they serve their purpose. Okay. Like I said, they represented something uh, totally different than what they were presenting themselves to be. Okay symbolism i keep getting that and i want you guys to figure out and define what that word means to you and what it means to you in your life um also with this uh message right now i'm telling you with telling you guys with this message um find the symbolism in your connections find the symbolism in your life find the different symbolisms in your world and your circumstance because i'm saying that when you guys pick up on certain patterns and symbolism you guys can finally uh gain that key 
to unlock okay the solution you guys are looking for some of you guys aren't paying attention to the patterns in your life and your circumstance and also you guys aren't paying attention to the symbol that is coming across you guys in your waking life so you may uh get these things in dreams so definitely pay attention and keep a book by your by your bed keep your phone or your little notepad by your bed to write these things out when you first wake up because some of you guys may definitely forget but my grandmother okay go back to the story okay my grandmother was uh she was humming okay she had her cane my grandma used to walk with the cane um and she would take her time walking okay um and it was a reason for that okay it was a reason why i paid attention to that. i'm thinking to myself there's no way i got my two nieces here my sister here we're talking and, and she's alive my grandmother passed away so this is not real so i kind of realized it wasn't a dream when i saw my grandmother because i'm like she's gone i've already came to terms in real life that she's not here with us, but she's still here with us. And the spiritual realm was the reason why she came into my dream, okay? So I looked over at her and I just smiled and it was nothing but peace on her, okay? She didn't look like she needed the cane, okay? She just had the cane, you know, just to have it because that's how I remembered her as, okay? Or remembered that one uh, symbol that she had with her was that cane okay the support okay and i think my, my grandmother showed up in my dream to symbolize support okay so she was humming i looked over to the side and i was talking to my sister about the pictures and stuff like that we were kind of reminiscing about our childhood we were talking to the two-year-old and a five-year-old and all of a sudden this man okay this man came out of nowhere he came into the room and we were waiting for the teacher and I heard uh, down from the hall, because we weren't in the office, we were in like a classroom down from it, okay? I heard them talking and they were laughing and you could hear them preparing uh, a certain curriculum, okay? Like the principal was giving, from a distance I can hear that, the principal was giving, uh, was giving the different teachers a pep talk before they started their, their day and their, their class, okay? And I can hear it. And the guy walked in and he looked like he was a, at least about a good 65 to 70 years old. He was old, gray hair, tall. He was uh, he was a black guy, okay? But he was a uh, light caramel complexion. Um, and this has something to do with a lot, okay? Some of you guys have a grandfather or either father who, uh, who matched that description, okay? That could have passed away. But this is a really dark turn. Uh, for what I'm about to say, okay? So you guys, this may trigger you guys in some way. Um, I'm not foretelling something, but I'm definitely, uh, I'm, I was picking up on this, this, these things because I feel like these things need to be said as to bring you some guys, some of you guys, some sort of awareness, okay? To your situation. And it was a really vivid dream because like I said, I remember the colors. I remember the smell of the school, okay? Paper and crayons and paint and paper mache, the glue. I can still have that. I still have that smell in my mind. I still remember that smell. And I still remember the, the humming my grandma was doing. She was swaying, okay? And the man walked in. And when he walked in, I noticed that she stopped. But she was still humming, but the humming wasn't as loud because, like I said, I can still hear down the hallway. I can still hear the teachers talking to the principal and the principal laughing and cracking jokes and trying to give the teachers a pep talk. And he walks in. And me and my sister were still admiring the pictures. And I'm looking at him. He walks in. He looks at us. He walks up to my sister. He says, is, is, is this you? Is this you guys? And he said our names. OK, he said my real name, you know, Shamira and everything. And I'm like, and I got this really bad feeling in my stomach, okay? I'm like, I'm, I'm shaking my head, no, but the words won't come out. And I just knew something was just a little off about this man, okay? He was dressed in jeans and he had like a utility belt. Uh, I saw a white and red striped polo shirt. And the picture when he pulled it out he pulled it out of his jeans his his front pocket his front right pocket and he showed my sister and she looked at the picture and said yeah why and i'm shaking my head no and i'm saying no why she's saying yes and as soon as she says yes and she confirms it he pulls out a a gun okay a big ass gun i think that i don't know what kind of gun i'm not familiar with guns and stuff like that but it was a really really big gun and he screwed on a silencer and he said okay 
if you are such and such, you know, Shamira and, you know, my sister, um, I want you to go to the next room. Don't say anything. Don't scream. And at that moment, she she was surprised. She dropped the picture because she didn't know right then and there what she just did. She just confirmed basically someone. It was a hitman. And for some reason, I've realized it clicked in my mind that the hitman was there because the father, okay, the father of the children sent the hitman there to take out my sister. And because my sister wasn't there to uh, drop the children off that day and I wasn't, my sister was, he was just going to take out the whole damn family, okay, me, the children, because he couldn't get to my sister, okay? And I think that the father, okay, my sister's um, baby daddy, okay, or husband, boyfriend, whatever he was to her, knew that if he couldn't get to her, he would get to her through us by hurting us and also hurting the children because he just was that done with her. So, and it has something to do with that argument. Like I said earlier, when I had the children holding their hands and I was seeing them fussing on the phone and I heard over her him screaming out, I had a really dark sinking feeling in my stomach, okay, that I knew something wasn't going to come from, nothing good was going to come from that argument, that I knew that something would happen after that argument, okay? So as he was screwing on his silencer, he looked over to the two children and you can see that he had, it went from him smiling at us and asking us, hey, are you this like, he came to us in a friendly manner, but after she confirmed and said yes, the face just dropped and you can just see that it was uh, no feeling, no emotion. It was nothing. He was a hitman, okay? And because he was an old man and he had his utility belt on, people probably were mistaking him for a janitor or probably some old grandpa. He, was, he wasn't he was really, uh, he wasn't really someone to be feared, okay? He was, really wasn't a threat. So he came off as not being a threat on the outside, but he definitely was someone to be feared. Um, you could definitely tell he was uh, used to doing this because he was so comfortable just pulling out that gun. Okay, no one else was around in the room besides me, my sister, my grandmother, who was humming. And she's still, in some way, she was still humming. You can still see the peace over her because once, I don't think that my sister even saw my grandmother. But the babies didn't see them either, but only I did. I, I noticed her and she was humming. And when he said that, okay, go in the other room, he was screwing on the silencer she stopped humming she stopped rocking she said give me just a moment she talked in a really calm voice she was the calmest person in the room my sister was frozen was panicked she grabbed the children's hand and they were just oblivious to what was going on um the five-year-old would just hold a two-year-old hand and they were basically comforting each other because um this is what they're used to doing so it was nothing that was really phasing the children they weren't frantic or anything because they were already soothing each other from the previous uh outbursts of conflict that they were experiencing earlier by the parents okay it was something that was normal okay but um, they hold each other hands and they held my sister hand and she walked them into the room. And I looked back at my grandmother and I said, wait, wait. And, and he kind of pushed me. He didn't really want to make a scene, but he said, I don't want to be rough with you, but just please get back in the room and do what I asked you to do now, right now. I really don't want to do this because I have to do this. This is what I do. And he was like, you too, old lady. And I looked at her and she said, just a moment. And she was getting up and taking her time. Even though she had the cane, I don't think that she needed the cane. It was a it was a gut feeling that I just knew she didn't need that cane. That she was taking her time to kind of throw him off to buy us some time to get go get help down the hallway in the office. So she was her sole purpose was there to protect us. Not only us, to protect those children and to become a diversion. Okay? It's something about protection, okay? Support to support us. Even in death, you guys may have a grandmother or a mother figure around who takes care of you guys, who looks out for you guys, who in some way is still there to support you even when other, everyone else around you have, have given up on you or they're still there to protect you in some way. And you guys may be the only person that is experiencing this out of your whole family, out of different siblings. You could be the only person, and maybe even your grandparents, your grandmother, uh, favorites, you could be their favorite. I'm also seeing a godmother, even a great auntie. 
Okay, you don't know, it doesn't have to necessarily be your birth grandmother, it could be your step grandmother or something like that, but it's a elder woman who is looking out for you guys to protect you guys on this earth right now as we speak. Uh, they are definitely serving as you guys' guardian angel, okay? As you guys protect or you guys support system. Even if you guys are going through something really troubling and challenging in your life, maybe in your family, that person is rooting for you. So if you guys feel like the black sheep, just know that your grandparent, this elder, this older figure, this woman figure, is always behind you 100% to take care of you, to make you feel loved, to support you and allow her to, okay? Even though she comes off as needing help herself, she's in a better place than you guys will ever be or could ever be at this moment, okay? So definitely open yourself up to receive that protection and that that guard, okay? For her to be your guardian because this is her sole purpose. This is her purpose at this time right now in your life. And I'm hearing that only you guys can, only you guys have a, uh, you have this link to her. You're the only person in the family who is experienced this, experiencing this connection with her or able to feel her, okay? She only comes to you in your dreams, okay? When you guys pass through the dream portal, she meets you in the spiritual realm and she serves as a guide, okay, in some way or protection in some way, okay? I had to get over that, but she was taking her time. Back to the dream, she was taking her time and he didn't want to push her. But I kind of slid down away from the door. He said inside the door, inside the room, inside the room. And I made eye contact with a teacher because my sister was like breathing really heavy. And I think one of the teachers peeked out and kind of saw her. And said, well, are you okay? What's wrong? And she, went, she couldn't speak. And I'm coming out the other room, looking down the hallway, and I made eye contact with one of the teachers. And the teacher got the principal, and they kept asking what was wrong, and I wouldn't say anything. And they just got the other teacher with three teachers, three women teachers, a male teacher, and a principal, a woman principal. And they all came down at the same time. They was like, oh, my gosh, I'm sorry, Miss uh, Brooks. Uh, we had you waiting. Let's get your babies in class. Let's get your babies in uh, the daycare, okay, in the program. And as they're saying that, he came out, the guy came out with a gun and he said, get back, everybody get back. And they all paused and they grabbed my hand and I had my sister hand too. And they grabbed her hand, but for some reason she had let go of the children and the children were in the room. And the man saw that, the hitman saw that he ran into the room and closed the door and shut himself in the room with the children with a gun. And he said, if you guys don't get me out of here, I'm going to kill both these children right now. And I was panicking and panicking. I'm looking back. My grandmother had disappeared. She's gone. She's nowhere to be found. Um, she's not in the room. She's not in the room with the guy. But during all the commotion of me trying to get the attention of the teachers and the principal, her purpose had already been served. She already served her purpose. So she, I guess she just disappeared out of the dream. But like I said, I noticed that my sister or the children didn't notice her. The only person who noticed her was me and the man. And it was for a reason. Okay. So she's gone. And I'm, it's just me and I'm with the teachers and I'm, I'm, I'm explaining to them what happened. The picture that he, the guy has showed us, the hitman has showed us. Uh, it's on the ground and I'm trying to pick the picture up and show them what had happened and tell them what had happened. But by the time I'm explaining to them, uh, the police was there quick. Okay. So they must have had security or police around the area, but it's a stand off the police. It's like, we're going to come in there and arrest you. Uh, please, please don't do anything you're going to regret. Okay. And I just saw 3333. So they're going back and forth trying to get the man to tell us, you know, to tell everyone why he's doing this. And he's like, I've been hired by their father to take out the mother. And the police was trying to explain to the man, none of these people are the mother. They're the aunties. He's like, I don't care, but I've been, I've been, I already uh, got half of my money. I need the rest of my money. Um, I have to do this job. Okay. He was kind of yelling through the door and the police officer was like, you don't negotiate with, with people who, um, for murderers or hitmen and stuff like that. We're trying to negotiate your life. You know, we won't, we won't give, really give you a hard sentence if you admit that you've been hired by this person. But he's like, no, it's my job. I already got paid. I can't just do that. I want the rest of my money. I got to kill somebody. Somebody getting killed today. And like I said, this whole dream took a really dark turn. 
um, suddenly the sun that was outside, you know, the room that we were in with the butterflies and pictures and art became really gloomy. Uh, see, see how the, the sun just went down. Okay. Kind of like this. Okay. Everything became really dark and it was a, it was a, some sort of air of sadness and guilt that washed over me. I can definitely feel the guilt of letting my sister's hand go or even getting the attention of the people because I feel like because of what I did, getting the attention of the teachers and the principal, I kind of caused the man to be in there by himself with the children. I put the children to danger. So in some way, my sister entrusted the children in the hands of me and I feel like I failed her. I felt guilt that I put them in danger. And my sister, she was still stunned. She was still frozen. She wasn't reacting. She was just looking like she wasn't doing anything, but just looking. She was in shock. Okay. My other one. And I think she in some way was kind of guilty or she felt guilt or shame for letting the children's hand go. Because at that point we were both to blame for not protecting those children. Okay. Um, sometimes some of you guys may have triggers where you need people in your life when you're going through difficult things. Okay. And you can't quite get that support from other people. Uh, you may beat yourself up. Okay. You guys may have these uh, triggering moments where you may break down and cry. You thought you got over certain things and you guys feel weak. Like you let yourself down. It's not the fact that you guys let yourself down. It's that you're trying to take on the role of something that should have been taken on by your caregivers growing up or something that, was not your responsibility to do, okay? Even though I knew those children were not my responsibility, I still volunteered, okay? It's something about a need to soothe, a need to help, a need to please, a need to uh, put yourself uh, in the back burner, put your needs in the back burner in order to help other people, okay? Oh my gosh, it's, it's a really, really heavy message, you guys. If you are getting what I'm saying, you guys will get what I'm saying. And I hope I am... Bring into light some some things, okay? You guys need to see within yourself, okay? Like technology, all right? Um, oof. So because he wasn't getting the man, back to the dream, because the man, the hit man wasn't getting uh, exactly what he wanted. Or he wasn't hearing exactly what he wanted to hear. He just said, after this, he said, I'm going to shoot these little mother effers, okay? He, he reached out. Um, and just was holding the gun. You can still, it's the glass on the door and the classroom door. If you guys have these classroom doors, if you guys know the classroom doors in elementary school, they have like glass, you can see through them. And the police were like, uh, they had snipers from the window and also snipers, you know, in other classroom, uh, threatening to kill him if he would raise the gun again to the children. And you can see at some point, the children finally understood what was going on. The five-year-old grabbed the two-year-old and was hugging the two-year-old, balled up under a desk, okay, where he pointed the gun at the children. Um, he got shot, not in the head, by one of the snipers, but not one, one of the snipers. He didn't get shot in the head by the sniper. He got shot in the arm. And because he got shot in the arm, his hand was on the trigger. He shot and he shot the, he shot the babies. He shot the little girls, okay? And they were gunshot wounds. It was to the head, okay? But it went straight through. What I'm about to say, you guys, is like, uh, they survived. The little girl survived, but it wasn't a damage. Uh, it wasn't a damage shot to their head, okay? It didn't kill them. It didn't hurt them. Um, but it, it definitely harmed them. I mean, it hurt them. It harmed them. But it wasn't... Uh, extensive damage okay it was definitely something that was healed something that was uh treatable okay and you heard the little girls uh you heard a a, a small uh, okay and when he got he said oh my god i didn't mean to do i didn't mean to do it he got shot again in his leg he dropped the gun okay so he was arrested and they took him away bleeding and everything else and they heard took the uh, paramedics kind of hurt and rushed into the room it was they started in some way uh working on the girls they were working on their wounds they wrapped their little heads around and i don't know why but everything in some way fast forwarded that day um it was still the same day but um they looked at the wounds and they also looked at the bullet and the bullet was caught in one of the legs of the table 
okay, of the dust they were hiding under. And went through one child's head to the other child's head through the dust. And it was a clean shot through. They had some swelling. And it sounds really strange. This is a dream. You guys have to understand it is a dream. They did operating on the children in the room. And they said that the children are fine. Nothing was damaged. It definitely missed their brain. Okay. Um, this sounds really weird. This may be true. May not be true. Maybe this is a part of my figment of my imagination. But one of the paramedics told me um, that it didn't damage the children. It didn't hurt them. It didn't end them because their brains were still fully developing. I don't know what that had to do with anything, but that was the reason why it didn't uh, take them out, okay? They were in some way scratched by the bullet, okay? Because it was a clean exit out. It really didn't do too much damage, okay? And then I heard one of the uh, doctors say it was better for the children to have got hurt because they are younger and it, it may take them... Uh, it, it may take them quicker to heal. Okay. They definitely will reproduce certain cells and take them quicker to heal. And it wasn't really that much damage, but, it, but you better be glad that it wasn't you two who got shot because if you guys would have got shot, it would have been uh, life threatening. You guys would have been gone. Okay. So in some way I felt relief that the babies were okay. And I also felt relief that the situation wasn't as bad as it could have gotten. Okay. It wasn't as tragic, okay, that at least the babies and we, me and my sister, we did survive, okay? But I still felt that guilt of not being able to care for them, protect them like I felt like I should have, okay? Some of you guys also have a grandmother or grandfather who couldn't protect you from your mother and your father and the abuse you guys may have went through, maybe the mental, psychological abuse. And they passed away and you guys may feel alone, because you guys spent so much time with this grandmother. I'm even seeing an auntie or uncle. Um, some family friend, okay, who used to take care of you guys when uh, the parents weren't around. They feel like if they have passed away, they are on the other side. They feel like because uh, of what you guys been through, you guys may sometimes talk to them. You may pray to them. Um, when you, or you guys may talk to them through prayer. Or when you guys are praying, they felt like they couldn't in some way... Uh, they couldn't protect you from your mother and father. So that auntie, that mother figure, that grandmother, that even the godmother, um, they could have felt like they kind of let you down. So they may come into your dreams to give you some sort of comfort and protection because they felt like they weren't able to protect you on the physical realm when they were alive. So that's why they're kind of in some way coming to you. They felt like they could have done more. And I'm also hearing that this grandmother, this mother figure, this auntie, this uncle, um, this godmother, they could have been going through their own things in life, okay? Maybe they had an illness, okay? It's something to do with the cane. Maybe they couldn't walk. Maybe their own illness stopped them from truly uh, protecting you and being that guardian you guys were looking for. Something about the guardian, okay? They couldn't be the guardian in the 3D realm, in the physical realm, but they're now serving as your guardian, uh, noun, okay? On the spiritual realm. They're not only protecting you, but they're also protecting the planet. Protecting the different souls on this planet, okay? Mm. And some of you guys, you're, you guys are meant to be uh, guardians of the planet. Some of you may definitely be up for uh, being maybe an advocate of child child abuse or something like that or uh child neglect you guys may be, may be into social work or if not you guys protect animals i'm seeing PETA and stuff like that you could plant trees uh protect wildlife but you guys have a bigger purpose on this earth and that's why you guys are being sent this godmother or this grandmother or this this uh guardian to remind you that you have a bigger purpose on this earth than just your issues, than just your problems. Um, sometimes, even though you guys are the protector of other things and other people, maybe of the earth, you guys also need protection yourself. And it's okay to turn to your spirit guides, your guardians for help or to realize that you guys may, may need that nurturing from time to time, okay? 
Yeah. That's what I wanted to say. And at the end of this dream, you guys, I walked away with my sister. My sister picked up the two-year-old and I picked the five-year-old. And I asked the five-year-old, are you okay? And she said, yes. And I asked the two-year-old, is she okay? She said, yes, I'm okay now. Um, and for some reason, the two-year-old being taken away by my sister, the two-year-old didn't need protection anymore, okay? From the five-year-old. And I didn't need protection from my other sister. I kind of felt okay, relieved. I felt safe, okay? In an unexplained way, okay? I cannot explain to you guys why I felt that way, but I felt relieved and safe. Um, but I still felt this underlying a feeling of guilt, but it wasn't as strong as before. Okay, like I said, because of the two little girls surviving and also that the situation didn't turn out to be as bad. Okay, I still have my life. My sister still had her life. My other sister, uh, we were on the phone with her. Okay, we told her what happened and she was she was crying, but she was also happy that nothing happened to us, her sisters, and also her babies were still alive. Okay, and the man was taken away. He wasn't killed. He was taken away. Okay. But the whole situation was just over. Okay. We were all relieved that we were still all standing, even though it was a, a tragic incident. Um, it wasn't as bad as it could have been. Okay. So we got into the car. My sister got into her car, put the two-year-old in the seat, and I sat next to the five-year-old, and we just quietly drove off okay and I kind of projected out of the car and I felt myself just floating as I watched the car right off into the sunset okay that light and watching that sunset this orange is in the car in some way It gave me the warmth and the comfort, okay, that I was searching for and looking for throughout the whole dream, okay? 29, reduce it. 2 plus 9 is 11. 11, divinely guided, okay? And even though that was a really strange and, and really wacky and wonky dream, that damn gnat, I got my window open, my screen is cracked a little bit, I got to close it. Um, even though that was a really wacky and weird dream, like I said, it's something about the symbolism that I felt like uh, was necessary in that dream, okay? It was something for me to see, something for me to witness in order for me to, uh, in some way, bring a solution to someone in my life, okay? Because even though I know this isn't happening in my waking life, in my real life, I felt like I needed to get this these these messages in order to uh, help someone in my family or even in my soul family, okay? Maybe some of you guys in my community, okay, um, who comes to my channel. It was definitely to bring some of you guys a solution to your problems or to get you guys to change your perspective of how you're seeing things, okay? Some of you guys are definitely allowing fear, okay? Fear, guilt, shame for not showing up for other people to control you guys and to control how much you guys are giving to yourself. And it's also keeping you guys from opening up to other people. And also it keeps you guys pushing those people away. People who are meant to bring you the comfort and solutions you guys have been looking for your whole life. Okay. It was something I said about the in the other video that some of you guys are not getting the solution to your issues and to your circumstances, to your problem, because you guys are not ready to receive it yet. Because it's something within you guys you must learn. It's this one more step you guys must take in order to finally be able to see the key or to discover the key that unlocks it, to unlock the solution you guys have been looking for. It's right in front of your face, but you guys have to be open to that, to be open to receive that information. And you guys are fighting it or pushing it away. Because it's a, certain, uh, it's a certain level of guilt or shame you guys are allowing to control you, to keep you from finding a solution. Because maybe 
find the solution requires for you guys to focus on yourself and to put down the burden of always being the rescuer, of always being there for other people, of finally being there for yourself the way you guys need it to be for yourself, the way you guys needed other people to be there for yourself. Okay, and some of you guys may feel that guilt and that shame, like I said, of not being the strong one or not being the person to rescue other people, of not people pleasing, of finally being vulnerable enough to receive, okay, what your inner child is craving, what your inner child needs, which is that support, that guidance, that love, okay? That protection. So if you guys, I'm going to definitely leave it here. Um, if you guys got something from this message today, it's a really weird message, okay? So if you guys get it, you get it. If you don't, you just don't. But um, take in everything, okay? Take in everything. Allow it to soak in. Okay, and you guys decide what you want to do with this information, with this dream interpretation. And I definitely hope it helps you guys. Um, once again, if you guys are looking for a dream interpretation, um, I will leave a reasonable price. Okay. And I will definitely let you guys know the steps into actually getting your dream interpreted. Okay. And we'll work something out. All right. But um, if you guys are interested in it, uh, definitely hit the, the links, okay, below or read in the description box below this video. Um, all about it. Okay, enough enough about that. Yeah, enough about it. Just ask me, me. Okay. And, um, yeah, I hope you guys have a beautiful, beautiful rest of your week. Your wild and free uh, Wednesday week. Yeah, it's hump day. Okay. And, yeah. Thank you guys so much for being with me for watching. And I will see you guys next time. Mm -hmm.